I'll now look forward to some of the next steps for Adalta. Um, we're really pleased with the 8214 clinical data that we've shared today. It's really important to us for multiple uh, reasons, but it's also a, a very solid outcome in our view uh, for the safety and tolerability of this product. We've also announced substantial amendments to our phase one design. And these are important for three reasons. Firstly, we are preserving our original objectives, which is to generate early data on the effect of elevated CXCR4 on AD214 distribution and receptor occupancy in diseased tissue. And we're on track to achieve that in Q3 this year. We're exploring potential for longer dosing intervals and the study design will continue to provide insights into the mode of action. But in addition to that, we're now driving a faster outcome to phase two. By moving to a more conventional single ascending and multiple ascending dose study, uh, we will generate data that will support a phase two investigational new drug application to the uh, FDA or other regulatory agencies by the end of 2021. We're no longer dependent upon the ability to recruit IPF and ILD patients, and that data package would support multiple indications, not just IPF and ILDs. The IPF and ILD patient study in phase 1B is going to be easy to recruit and much more flexible. And the parallel design means we can run both the phase 1B and the rest of the phase 1 uh, safety studies in parallel, leading to a faster outcome overall. We'll also be generating new options as a result of this new design. As I mentioned, the safety package will support all intravenous indications of AD214 and be a platform for other routes of administration as well. We'll generate primary safety data in combination with standard of care through the IPF and ILD phase 1B protocol, something we couldn't have achieved before. By offering up to six doses over up to 18 weeks to that patient cohort, as Claudia, as Claudia and, and um, uh, Glenn have mentioned, we may get an initial indication of efficacy, although I have to emphasise the study will not be designed to achieve that, and with the small numbers, it will be really difficult to see that signal. Um, and we will see, potentially, by screening other CXCR4 uh, patients or other patients with indications that are known to have elevated CXCR4, we may get indications of CXCR4 engagement by AD214 in a broader patient popula population. So those three benefits of the new program are all achieved with no material impact on our overall cost of the study, nor in our 2021 cash requirements. So this initial clinical validation of AD214 is really setting us up for the next stage of accelerating the expansion of our pipeline of assets derived from our iBody platform. And this slide is really designed to illustrate both the progress we've made to date and the momentum we're building to a more rapid acceleration over the coming years. So at the end of 2019, we were essentially a one product company, all built around AD214 with the GE collaboration just signed. We progressed both of those assets through 2020, um, moving AD214 into the clinic. By the end of 2021, we estimate that we'll have further progressed both of those assets, including additional preclinical data in AD214 uh, and other indications. But more importantly, we'll have added another three assets to our pipeline. We're currently projecting that two of those will be wholly owned internal assets and one will come from our, our next co-development collaboration. And again, the data we've presented today is going to increase the attractiveness of the iBody platform to third parties seeking a better solution to their drug targeting challenges. By the end of 2023, so another two years on from the end of this year, that acceleration is going to continue and we would forecast or we would aim to have nine programs in development at that point with another two third party co-development collaborations, another two internal targets, AD214 into phase two and potentially in phase one in additional indications and the GE collaboration also moving into clinical trials. Bringing that back to what investors and shareholders should look for over the next 12 months, uh, we have a number of milestones that are still on track um, as forecast uh, at the AGM last year uh, to achieve against both 8214 
our GE collaboration and the broader pipeline expansion. So in summary, we believe that Dalta is, a, is and remains a very attractive investment proposition. Uh, we have a patented iBody platform for asset creation that's designed for difficult targets and is now clinically and commercially validated. AD214 is an important asset in its own right, as Glenn has mentioned, addressing a massive unmet need, a $3 billion market today with two drugs that don't work particularly well. Our GE collaboration provides the commercial validation we need for the platform and adds our second asset into the pipeline. That's progressed very well through the year and aims to move into preclinical development this year. Importantly, these achievements allow us to execute on our vision of growing our existing assets and adding new assets to the pipeline and we have an 8 million cash reserve in hand to facilitate that process. We have an experienced drug development team driving the strategic focus. They're all industry experienced and this unique combination of a validated platform, a cash runway, a great team represents really a unique opportunity uh, ahead of the acceleration of our pipeline um, in the coming uh, year and years. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for your attention. I hope this has been useful and I look forward to catching up with uh, shareholders at various other meetings we'll be scheduling around the, the country in the, in the coming weeks and months. Thank you very much.